70 degrees. This is December deer hunting. I can't believe it. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. To the left, to the left. That's a buck. That's a that's him. Yeah, that's a good buck. The white-tailed deer makes its home across much of North America, and we've got three hunters in three locations in search of the biggest ones. From the dense forests of northern Alberta to the mesquite thickets of Texas on Winchester's Whitetail Revolution. Winchester's Whitetail Revolution is brought to you by Winchester Ammunition, the American legend. Bushnell Optics, magnify life. Code Blue, perfecting the science of hunting. Winchester Repeating Arms, the guns that work. In Texas, Ron Spomer is on Richard's Ranch, just an hour outside of Dallas and Jacksboro, Texas. The thick oak stands and deep brush make for great deer habitat, as well as provide cover for some prize Lone Star bucks. Pretty much you name it, we had it. We had uh, anything from 80 degree afternoons to 30 mile an hour south winds to 19 degree mornings with 30 mile an hour north winds. So the wind was definitely a factor, and we just had to uh, adapt the best way we could. The plan this evening is to finish this off by going to shoot a buck, because my super guide and scout here, Shannon, went out and found the place with the buck coming to the field in which we will terminate his existence on planet Earth. And we would move his existence into my freezer. Yeah, let's do it. The wind's going down, life is looking better every minute. All right, Rob, what we're gonna do, walk on down this road, probably six, 700 yards. Uh -huh. uh, there'll be an intersection in the road. Okay. What it is, uh, to the south, down another clearing, you'll see, uh, well, you won't see, but there'll be some scrape lines down there. Mm -hmm. I've been seeing a nine point in there. He's got five on the right, four on the left. Got some pretty good mass. Maybe just a tick outside his ear. Okay. Probably 120, 130 inch deer. That's his area. He works that road kind of walking his scrape lines. Yes, sir. Ah, that sounds perfect. I'm going to switch to my lucky hat. Shannon took me to the spot, said, no big rush. You know, get there about 4 o'clock, got a couple hours till dark. Watch that scrape line down those roads where he's traveling, and you'll probably find him in there. thing about this rangefinder, it's about an 8x monocular. If you get your binoculars, at least you've got a monocular. It actually works pretty well. That's a deer right there. That's a buck. That's, a, that's him. That's got to be him. Yeah, that's a good buck. Oh, that's him. That's got to be him. That's not him. It's awfully close. Down. I couldn't believe it. Man, that happened fast. Sun's not even down yet. That's gotta be the deer Shannon was talking about. Say yeah! But then out of nowhere comes a buck like that. I mean, Shannon went out scouting this morning and found it and said, man, I think that buck's gonna come right back in there. He's been working that line, lots of sign. When you find a buck that's still after the ladies, he's probably gonna be out prowling a little more, uh, you know, sooner in the afternoon before dark and all that stuff, and that's what you need—a little bit of a of an edge like that. And by golly, we got it! Days and days of waiting and trying and trying and waiting and mixing it up and nothing and nothing and phew, patience, man. 
That's the name of the game. Oh, that is a nice little buck. All right through the boiler room. Oh, you are the guy. This has got to be the one he's describing. Five by four nine pointer. That is just it. Better than average mass on him. Nice brow tines. You are the very dear Shannon told me. What a guide. Just like the doctor ordered. That is great. You are a super little deer in your prime, aren't you? You are going to be some mighty fine, tasty venison. Whoa, look at those hawks you got. You are in a rut there, dark. Oh, yeah. Ooh, baby. I can't believe it, Shannon. You were right on, buddy. Sun's not even down yet, 70 degrees. This is December deer hunting. I can't believe it. You wait here. I'm going to go get Shannon. I didn't want to take it down to the last evening of the hunt, but as luck would have it, lo and behold, there's Ron's deer standing there. It's just a great representative of a Texas deer and a great representative of a Richard Ranch buck. I think what I'll take away from this hunt, despite all my years of deer hunting, is just you never stop learning. And the big lesson here was despite the worst weather conditions for what you would consider a late season deer hunt, despite the heat and the big winds, persistence paid off. The deer knows when he's coming out and you don't. You just have to be there. By golly, by getting out in these 70 plus degree temperatures, and sitting on this trail, I would have never thought a buck would have come out based on what we saw for the last three, four days, but there he was. That was great. What a way to end the hunt. Coming up next, Willie Schmidt is on the move as he works to get within range of big Nebraska whitetails. He's busting through weeks just a little bit quicker than faster than I like, but uh, he was gonna blow the whole thing. He's got us picked now. I just need to get 10 more feet miles to get on. Willie Schmidt is in Nebraska using all of his skills, but sometimes luck is the only thing you need, as Mike Hanbeck explains in Buck of a Lifetime. One day last fall, Brent Ireland's buddy missed a double drop tine monster not once, but twice. Brent had a notion that big deer was still in the area. He slipped in and set a trail cam 100 yards from this site. The next day he checked it, and there was double drop right on film. Brent hung a tree stand and hunted it hard in the rut. One morning a big eight pointer came in. Should he shoot it or wait for double drop? A stick cracked and there he was, double drop again. He smoked the buck this time at 15 yards with a perfect arrow. Brent told me, Mike, you know, I can't explain how I felt when I walked up and held that huge rack in my hands. Can't you see why? The five by five net at 170 and change, add in 29 inches of ad normal antler and you get 199 and six eighths, one of the top bucks shot in Indiana last fall. Hell, that's got to be one of the top buck shot anywhere in North America with a bow last fall. Great job, Brent. Great hunting, buddy. For more great big buck stories like Brent's, check us out on the web at versuscountry.com. In the hayfields of Nebraska, among the bales and water towers, Willie Schmidt seems to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. His brash approach in late season buck fever threatens to ruin his chance at a trophy. When we finally saw the, the deer that we really wanted to harvest, I put Willie out in front so he can, can get set up and make the shot. Make it this way. Everybody's getting pretty excited there and, and uh, he's busting through weeds just a little bit quicker than faster than I like. Thought uh, he was gonna blow the whole thing.
He's got us picked out. I just need to get 10 more feet miles to get on the edge of this brush. He's, he's looking right at us, so okay. don't move. He'll move again. When she moves, he's going to want to watch her. There's too much brush between us and him right now. going to stop right there. Yeah, that's your shot. Good job. Good shot, Will. Willie, good Thank shot. Thank you, Miles. Thank you. Great shot. But he was not going to let her out, out of his sight. No, she was not going to be able to get to the river. No. Or the creek, I guess it is there. Should we go see what we got? Let's go look at him. All righty. Look at that. Nice deer. Boy, I'm glad you didn't shoot that one yesterday morning. This looks like a way better deer. Well, from here, look at, he's getting no ground shrinkage here, huh, Miles? No, no kidding. Nice deer. Wonderful. <laughs> Great nice. Four point. nice G2. Got a little flat spot. Well, he sure is pretty. Nice deer. Whew. Neck swelled up. Yeah. All right. You can smell him now, boy. Rudd is on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's a great buck. Well, now the work begins. Thanks very yep. again. Thanks again very much. You're welcome. I couldn't be more thrilled with the quality of buck that it was. He had he had pretty good mass, but he had really nice tine length, very symmetrical 4x4. Four four. And uh, I'm just thrilled with the opportunity to hunt with Miles and uh, the quality of bucks that he has here. And I'm going to be proud to hang that on the wall with the pictures that we took. Coming up next, join Steve Stoltz as the weather threatens to keep the bucks out of sight in Alberta, Canada. Wait, 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 wait. There's a buck right there, right there. That's a good buck. I'm going to take him. Winchester's Whitetail Revolution is brought to you by Winchester Ammunition, the American legend. Bushnell Optics, Magnify Life. Code Blue, perfecting the science of hunting. Winchester Repeating Arms, the guns that work. Standing Eagle Outfitters operates on one of the few Indian reservations that allows hunting. And for Steve, it's a once-in-a-lifetime hunt. He'll have to draw on all of his experience and on-the-ground tactics as the bucks are on the move and chasing does. My name's Steve Stoltz. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm on my way to Elk Point, Alberta, and am I pumped? Had an invite from Standing Eagle Outfitters. They've got thousands and thousands of acres of prime monster class whitetail habitat. I mean, it's different than I've ever experienced. So I'm really looking forward to that challenge. And that's what whitetail hunting's all about. If you've got a challenge ahead of you, something different, something exciting, you just can't help to be 
pumped up about a trip like this. It is prime time for big white tails to be moving. Checking scrapes, checking on the does. There's a lot of does in this drainage. And with any amount of luck, we'll get a shooter in. And I just can't wait to get out there and hunt these big Canadian whitetails. Wait, 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 wait. There's some does. See them? I'm gonna try and slip up here to this log. Blow down right here. I don't think they're gonna see me. When I got to the second scrape site, there was some does already at that spot. Um, and and several, several of the does were, were standing right in the scrape at the drop time scent dispenser. And so that was where I was gonna set up, do some more rattling and grunting because where there are does, there's big bucks. Good, we're in the game. We got does out here. I'm gonna get my rattle and antlers out here in a second, but we got does out here in this drainage. They don't have a clue I'm here. And certainly I didn't wanna start rattling and calling with the does right out in front of me, so I let the does drift on off, waited probably 20, 30 minutes, got the grunt call out, got the rattle and antlers out, then I started my, my program. the sound carried down through that that drainage and I went ahead and did a, a real loud rattling sequence there's a buck right there right there I don't know where he came from, came out of the blue, but all of a sudden standing right down in front of me, probably about 80 or 90 yards, is this magnificent looking 10 point, beautiful buck. And he was standing right at the drop time scent dispenser that we put out the day before. Right there. That's a good buck. I don't know if he heard my horns or he's just following those does we saw earlier. He's missing his brow times. That's that one they said to go ahead and take. I'm gonna... I think he's looking for those does that were here. He's, yeah, that's what he's doing. Let me range him. Hold steady, big boy. He's 84 yards. He's just standing there. That's a big deer. I'm gonna take him. Here goes. Yes, he's down, yes. I'm gonna leave my horns here. So that was my opportunity to take the shot. And uh, the Winchester Model 70, I, I, I let it rip. I mean, it, it, it put the smack down on that buck, there's no question. Look at this, look at this buck. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, he's down. Wow, what an incredible whitetail. Look at this buck. He is everything you're looking for in a mature buck. He's missing his brow tines, doesn't make any difference. I'm proud of this deer. And uh, both Albert, Jimmy, and, and, and uh, Henry Stanley said, if you see the buck without brow tines, they call him baldy, take him. And uh, by gosh, we got a chance to take him this morning. We sifted through this brush, rattle and grunted, rattle and grunted, to no avail, and finally got to this drainage and saw some does out here in this brush, working this brush. Well, it's November 12th, and when you see does, there's gonna be a big buck around. I got the grunt call out, then the rattling antlers, and this big boy showed up. He was standing right at a code blue drop time scent dispenser that we put out. We got here yesterday, got in, got the mock scrapes out. We've got mock scrapes all through this valley to try and pull these bucks into the scrapes, checking them, and it worked this morning like a charm. Hey, brother. Shot. Thank you, thank you. What do you think about the bad boy? Good. I got baldy. I got baldy. Look at this. All right, guys. I guess we'll get them loaded up. You got the truck parked right over here. Oh, you predicted that one. The, one. the last thing he said when we, before we started hunting this morning, if you see that one without the 
brow tines we call baldy, yeah, so. take them. Well, what more could you ask for? You know, here you are at Standing Eagle Outfitters at Frog Lake, Alberta. Not many people get to hunt up here, and I just feel like, you know, Winchester Whitetail Revolution was very, very fortunate to be invited up here to the Indian Reservation at Frog Lake at Standing Eagle Outfitters. We had an absolute incredible hunt. Henry, thanks for having me, man. You bet you. Thanks. Thank you. We like having you. And on behalf of the Standing Eagle Outfitters here in Frog Lake, we like to send you this gun case that my wife Linda made. Your wife made this by hand. by hand. This is beautiful. Thank you. You know, just your friendship is enough. You did not have to give me a gift. But I thank you very much, and I will use this proudly. Ah!